Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the sofa. I've had many requests to talk about citizens arrest. So whilst this absolutely should not be taken as legal advice and it should not be taken as encouragement to go out and start tackling criminals by yourself or would be criminals or suspects by yourself. This is another overview of what citizens arrest is, how it applies, when it applies and how you might come to use it. So welcome back, I'm the Black Belt Barrister helping you to understand law and in this sofa chat episode talking about citizens arrest. So citizens arrest is provided for under section 24a of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act of 1984 commonly referred to as PACE. It provides that any person other than a constable, which is just any person, may arrest without a warrant anyone who is in the act of committing an indictable offence. An indictable offence is simply one that can be heard in the Crown Court, i.e. one that is not restricted to the Magistrates Court. So this includes either way offences, because they could be heard in the Magistrates Court or they could be heard in the Crown Court, hence it's either way. It could be heard or tried either way. Because it's indictable, it goes on an indictment, it can be heard in the Crown Court. You may have heard the term indictable only. Those are offences that can only be heard in the Crown Court. But of course, those are indictable as well. So indictable offences includes both either way and indictable only offences, which to be fair, is quite a lot of the offences that you are likely to see. Criminal damage is either way, theft is either way. And on almost every occasion where you see somebody physically hurt somebody else, that's likely to be either way as well. So back to the Act, Section 24A provides that any person other than a constable, that would include you as a citizen of England and Wales, can arrest anyone who is in the act of committing an indictable offence, anyone whom he has reasonable grounds for suspecting to be committing an indictable offence. That means even if you are not sure that they are committing an indictable offence, but you've got reasonable grounds that they are doing so, this act will still apply. This does require that you need to know what an indictable offence is, or that the offence that you suspect somebody of committing is an indictable offence i.e. an either way offence or an indictable only offence. If it turns out that it is categorically a summary only offence, you might be in trouble, which is why I would exercise extreme caution if you are undertaking a citizen's arrest. And moving on from that, aside from being in the act of committing an indictable offence, where this has already happened, this is provided for under subsection 2, which is where an indictable offence has been committed, a person other than a constable may arrest without a warrant anyone who is guilty of the offence or anyone whom he has reasonable grounds for suspecting to be guilty of it. So even if you are not absolutely sure that they have committed this offence, which was indictable, so long as you have reasonable grounds for suspecting that they were guilty of that offence, you may carry out a citizen's arrest. However, subsection 3 provides two things. One, that it must be necessary for one of a number of reasons that I'll come back to in just a moment, and two, that it is not reasonably practicable for a constable to make the arrest instead. In other words, if you're on the high street and there is a police officer there, they should be the one making the arrest. You should call out to them to come and make the arrest. But as we all know, the sight of a police officer out in public is more and more rare these days. So making an arrest yourself may be necessary if it is not reasonably practicable for the officer to make such an arrest. Now, coming back to those reasons that I mentioned just a moment ago, they are contained within subsection 4. Those reasons are to prevent the person in question from A, causing physical injury to himself or to any other person. Himself also means herself as well by the Interpretation Act. Or B, suffering a physical injury. C, causing loss or damage to property. So that could be criminal damage, for example, or stealing something, that would be loss of property. Or D, making off before a constable can assume responsibility of him. In other words, they can run away from the scene of the crime before a police officer comes to detain them. So you might be exercising this citizen's arrest to keep them there whilst an officer comes to make a formal police arrest. However, there are very often caveats to all of these things, and in this case, there are two. Subsection 5 provides that this section does not apply to an offence under Part 3 of the Public Order Act 1986, which is essentially a fray. And a fray is broadly defined as where a person uses or threatens unlawful violence towards another, and his conduct is such as would cause a person of reasonable firmness 
present at the scene to fear for his personal safety. So this might just be somebody shouting and using aggressive language or actions or gestures towards another person. Under subsection two, where two or more persons use or threaten unlawful violence. And so it is essentially the conduct of both of them taken together that is used that threatens unlawful violence towards another. And subsection three clarifies that this cannot just be words alone. And interestingly, under subsection four, no person of reasonable firmness need actually be or likely to be present at the scene. In other words, if no one is actually there, it doesn't really matter. Two people can still be committing a fray by the use of their words and action. So just coming back to the point, this is one of the offences where citizen's arrest does not apply under section 24A of PACE. In other words, if you see two people arguing and fighting in the street, causing a person of reasonable firmness to fear some sort of harm or violence, you cannot and obviously should not go up and try to make a citizen's arrest because you'd be wrong for doing so. It is also worth bearing in mind that if ever you do carry out an arrest in this way, that it can only be with reasonable force. If you use totally unreasonable force, you yourself might be charged with assault or even worse, and you might be charged with criminal damage if you cause damage to someone's clothing. Much worse is the case where you shouldn't have carried out such an arrest because it was wrong or unlawful, and then essentially every action you took would be wrong and you might be sued for it, both civilly and possibly even criminally. So in most circumstances, I would suggest leave it to the police. But if you absolutely know that you are in the right and you've looked up all the guidance, this video, by the way, is just guidance, not legal advice. But if you've looked up all the guidance and you really know what you're doing and you really feel that it's the right thing to do to carry out a citizen's arrest to prevent harm, to prevent loss or damage, or to prevent the person from absconding before the police can arrest them, then this is generally how you might affect a citizen's arrest as it is commonly known. I hope you find that useful. Please like the video and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.